Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to Books Past Bedtime. Today we're going to be doing my January wrap up. So first things first, as always, let's start off with a couple stats. In January, I managed to read a total of 12 books. Has gone down a little bit my monthly average because I am now working full time. So I'm adjusting a little bit, but I still read a good amount of books for no longer having that extra 40 hours in my week. <laughs> and of those 12 books, they added up to 5,124 pages. I also listened to a lot of audiobooks this month. So in total, all of those audiobooks added up to 75.7 .7 hours of audio. Video. My average rating for the month was 3.58, which is a little low, but about average for me. And some new stats for the month, I actually purchased two books, read one book from the library, and read two books that are own voices. In terms of genres, I read one dystopian, one fantasy, one historical, three horror slash thriller books, one mystery, one nonfiction, and four romance. Now these genres are definitely a little bit unusual for me, particularly because I did two videos where I read two of my friends' favorite books, Amanda who loves romance and Caroline who loves horror, so that is kind of why those two categories were the biggest this month. In terms of format, I did listen to seven audiobooks, I read two ebooks, and I read three books physically. In terms of age range. I read eight adult books this month, three new adult books, and one YA. In terms of author identity, I read one book by an author that uses he him pronouns and 11 books by authors that use she her pronouns. In terms of my author race, I read one book from a black author, two books from Latinx authors, and nine books from white authors. Another new stat here, I read zero debut books, but I did read nine new to me authors and three authors that I had read previously. In terms of rating, I don't have a huge variety this month. I did have one five star read, three four and a half star reads, three four star reads, and then we skip all the way down to 2.5 star reads which of I had five. And as you might remember from the beginning the average rating is 3.58 for the month. So those are my stats and now I have ranked the books that I read in January from least favorite to most favorite. It's kind of a rough ranking especially in the middle but I think it's pretty much in order and I'm going to go for my least favorite and end the video with my my very favorite book that I read in January. So let's just jump right into it. Probably my least favorite book that I read in January was The Grace Year by Kim Leggett. I read this book when I read my friend Manda's favorites. This book takes place in a dystopian world where girls are really only valued for their reproductive abilities. And this doesn't sit right with our main character. She really thinks that women are a lot more than this. Um, she also thinks that there is something fishy going on with the world that she lives in. When the girls kind of have their coming of age when they turn 16 or so, right before they get married, they're all sent off on this Grace Year and the theory behind this grace year is that it will rid them of their magic that is a danger to them as well as those around them. But our main character really does not believe that this magic exists. She thinks this is made up and that they're really just thrown out there to scare them, break them down, and turn them against each other. And so she gets sent out on her grace year and shit starts to go down. So there were definitely aspects of this book that I liked. I liked the feminist messages and I liked our main character for the most part. I also liked this character named Kirsten. She was very, very interesting and I wish we explored her character more but we spent a lot of time instead focused on this random romance that just was very sudden. I didn't really have a problem with there being a romance in this book per se, but just the way that it happened I thought was a little strange. I also wanted a little bit more from the ending. I get what the author was trying to do, but at the same time I wish she had done it in kind of a different way, but um, I did like the coming together of the mothers and daughters and having like a quiet rebellion kind of deal. So there are aspects I liked, aspects I didn't like. This was just an okay book overall, which is why it got a 2.5 rating for me. My next least favorite book of the month was from that same reading vlog. I'm sorry, Amanda. I just didn't read enough books this month. That is Credence. Just threw my pen. That is Credence by Penelope Douglas. This is an erotic romance story following our main character whose parents die. And when that happens, her uncle, dad's stepbrother, so he's like her step uncle or something. I don't know. She's meant to live with him and his sons because he now has custody of her because he's her only living relative or something. Anyway, she ends up screwing all three of them. <laughs> I'm... I don't know. <laughs> this book, like, I can see its appeal, but it's just not for me. Simply not for me. I have come to decide that Penelope Douglas herself is probably not for me. I'm not into the bully romances. There's also this really gratuitous um, assault scene in this book that is, like, kind of brushed under the rug and forgiven, which I didn't vibe with, <laughs> needless to say. I think there's a place for this kind of book, but it just is not for me. <laughs> it's just not for me. So this book got 2.5 stars for me. The next book on this list is Shutter Island by Dennis Lahane. I read this 
book when I read my friend Caroline's favorite books. And I kind of have mixed feelings on this book as well. This basically follows these two investigators who go to this mental asylum. There's this woman missing. They're there to try and find her. Our main character is also kind of there because he wants to get revenge on the man that killed his wife. And the man that killed his wife is also a resident at this asylum. So he's kind of got a bunch of different motivations going on. There's also this terrible storm that traps them on this island. They can't get a boat back to the mainland because of this terrible storm. So there's all these moving pieces and parts. And despite that, I kind of found it boring for most of it. I wasn't super engaged. I didn't really connect to the characters. I wasn't, I didn't really care that much about what was happening until the very end. The twist at the end was insane. I did not see it coming at all. It honestly is probably one of the best book twists that I've ever read in my life. It shocked me that much and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and it made sense throughout even though it was so shocking. So I really, really enjoyed the twist at the end. It just, the rest of the book wasn't there for me. So I gave this one a 2.5 star as well. The next book on my list is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is an adult romance following this girl named May who gets stuck in a time loop and has to figure out how to get out. This book takes place over Christmas time in this cabin, the snowy cabin, and has some romance in it. And it was a really cute and fluffy read. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. It was just very like mind-numbingly fun to read. But at the same time, there were some plot holes. The characters were a little cardboard cutout-y. They didn't have a lot of personality. I didn't really care that much about the romance. Um, I did like the two main characters together in some aspects, but I just didn't care about them that much. Um, another problem I have with this book was there were just too many dang characters in it. Like there were, there could have been 50% less characters and the story would have been exactly the same, which is just stupid. Like why didn't you edit out those characters out? <laughs> It has like that stupid e epilogue thing that romance novels do as well, which I was not a fan of. I don't know. Like if I don't think about it too much, I like this book. But then when I start like thinking about the things that were wrong with it, I don't like it as much. And so this one got two and a half stars for me. Next on my list is When No One Was Watching by Alyssa Cole. This book follows our main character, Sydney, who lives in this old Brooklyn neighborhood. Um, she grew up in this house. She loves this house that she's in, but her neighborhood is rapidly gentrifying. All these white families are moving in, um, renovating the houses, pushing the black people out because this is a traditionally black neighborhood and Sydney is not having it. She really wants to stop this from happening. There's also this weird corporation that is being built and its purpose is to kind of rehab people that are addicted to opioids. But as we learn throughout the story, there's something a lot more sinister going on. So I definitely liked aspects of this book a lot. I really liked um, learning about gentrification. I loved the histories of the characters and what they were going through and what they were working for. Um, but this book is pitched as like a mystery thriller and I didn't really think that it was. I almost would more so categorize it as horror, especially with the ending the way it was. Other people say they would categorize it as a romance with thrilling elements, which I wouldn't. I didn't really think it was very romancy personally. I mean, there is a romance element in it, but it's not, wasn't like the main focus at all. My problem with this book is that I just felt like it didn't really know what it wanted to be. I was really excited for the idea of like a mystery thriller with elements and talk of gentrification, but I don't think it worked very well. Like I felt like this book just was confused about what it wanted to be. I think it would have been better if we had just focused on the characters themselves and the aspect of the gentrification because I didn't think the thriller horror elements were very well developed. It wasn't very thrilling or horrific even though I could see that those were the elements that they were trying to push. So I just think that this book suffered from incorrect public publicity and I also just went into it with the wrong expectations so I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as I wanted to. So those are the issues I had with this book. Um, there was definitely good in it but I also just wasn't there you know so I gave this one a two and a half star as well. Now we can jump right up to the four stars because I had nobody in the middle <laughs> but the next book I want to talk about is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I also read this book when I read Manda's Favorites. This is a fantasy romance book. It follows our main character who is a maiden in this world and this means that she is like totally pure, totally chaste, protected from the prying eyes of the kingdom but she's not so sure she really wants maidenhood and she kind of goes off at the beginning of the book to this like den of iniquity <laughs> meets this guy named Hawk and Hawk eventually becomes her bodyguard and they get into it. <laughs> So I ended up really liking this one. It wasn't a five star read for me because it was a little bit slow and I don't typically love all of like the fantasy world building. And in this book in particular, it felt like it dragged a little bit. It was kind of info dumpy in parts, but I did really like the romance. I really liked our main character and I really liked Hawk um, and I really liked their romance. I kind of wish there was more of it. This book is really talked up as being like pretty smutty, but it's not. There's like maybe three smut scenes in it and they're all in the second half. So I just kind of wanted a little bit more from this. I wanted a little more spice <laughs> and I didn't get it. So 
that's why this book got knocked a star but I did really enjoy it and so I gave this one four stars. The next book on this list is one I just finished today and that is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. I ended up really liking this. This is a British mystery thriller and it follows a pretty wide cast of characters. For one we're following this young girl named Sapphire. Sapphire is 17. She had something horrible happen to her in her past and she is kind of obsessed with following her ex-therapist um, so she kind of stalks and follows him around. The other character we're following is Kate and Kate is the wife of this therapist that Sapphire is following around. She is kind of painted as sort of an unreliable narrator because in the past year she accused her husband of cheating and found out apparently that he wasn't a cheater and so she's kind of like the unstable housewife kind of character. And then we're also following this man named Owen who at the beginning of the book gets fired from his job at his school because he made some inappropriate comments and um, touched some girls inappropriately. He gets kind of involved in the incel community, starts doing some shady stuff, and then Sapphire disappears. So there's all kinds of moving parts in this book and the main gist of it is that they're trying to find out what happened to Sapphire and where she went. So I was kind of surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. I have read a couple Lisa Jewel books in the past including The Family Upstairs and Watching You and I liked neither of them. I thought they were both boring and kind of weird. So I didn't have super high hopes going into this one. I wanted to like it desperately and I did and I think I'm glad that I gave Lisa Jewel another chance because I kind of want to read all of her other stuff now because I really really liked this one. It was thrilling throughout. There was a lot of different characters that could have been the perpetrator and so I was kept guessing throughout and I was like oh maybe it's this person, maybe it's that person, maybe it's the other person which is something I really love in a thriller. Also this one was more crime based than a lot of the other ones so I felt like this one was my favorite Lisa Joel that I've read so far and I really liked it so I gave it four stars. I kind of want to give it more but I feel like realistically like compared to other books I really liked it's not worth giving it a higher rating but it's like when I read a good thriller it's like I just want to give it five stars so I really liked this one. I might change my rating but right now it's a four. <laughs> And the next book on this list is Lovely War by Julie Berry. I also read this when I read Manda's Favorites. This is a historical romance story. What's really cool about this one though is it's told from the point of view of the Greek gods and so Aphrodite, Hephaestus, and Ares are all telling and or listening to this story of this great love that happened during World War One. Follows mostly our characters James and Hazel who meet right before James gets shipped off to the war and it tells their story and their romance and how they eventually come back together. We are also following this other couple named Aubrey and Colette. Colette and Hazel become friends when Hazel goes to France to kind of help out with the war efforts. And that was one aspect I really loved about this book. The characters are so well developed and so well layered and have so many different interpersonal relationships that they really felt real. I really loved Hazel and Colette's friendship in particular. Um, I love that it was focused on that friendship just as much if not more than the romances that were going on. So I felt like that added a really rich element to the story. I also listened to this on audio and really loved the audiobook. Um, it includes music because because both Hazel and Aubrey are piano players and so when they're playing the piano that's included in the story. It's just a very rich and engaging listening experience so if you're interested in this one I would definitely recommend the audiobook. And yeah there was a lot to like about this one and made me cry which is why it got on the list higher than Invisible Girl and I really really enjoyed it and I am settling on four stars for this one. The next book on this list is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I read this book also when I read Caroline's favorite books. This is a new adult romance following our main character Kala and Kala moves to Alaska when she finds out that her dad has cancer. She's kind of been estranged from her father her whole life, doesn't really have a relationship with him, um, but when she finds out that he's sick she decides she wants to try and form a relationship with him before he passes away so she goes up to Alaska to meet with him and it's pretty awkward at first but they eventually find their footing. Um, while she is up there she also meets this guy Jonah. Jonah is a pilot at her dad's company and Jonah is very much grumpy. He doesn't like Kala very much. He's kind of mean to her but eventually they find some common ground and fall in love. <laughs> and this book was really cute. I ended up enjoying this way more than I thought I was going to. Jonah definitely got on my nerves a little bit, which is why it wasn't a five-star book. I really did like that this romance included a lot of deeper elements to it, especially the family relationship between Kala and her dad. Um, this book made me absolutely sob. <laughs> So I really ended up enjoying this one a ton and I'm still debating whether I want to read the next one or not but The Simple Wild itself got four and a half stars from me. The next book on this list is From Luke Off With Love by Marina Zapata and this book kind of took me by surprise too because I loved it so much. This is a new adult romance following our main characters who are both ice skaters and rivals. They have kind of hated each other forever but they kind of end up paired together and working together and they eventually become friends, start to trust each other, and then eventually a little bit more. I really loved this romance 
romance. It was just really fun and fluffy and it made me really happy. Um, I loved the ice skating elements. That's always something that I love in books. I like a sport element when it's like gymnastics or ice skating or something like that. <laughs> so I really liked that element. I also really liked how our relationship developed into a friendship and then into a romance. It was a little bit slow burn, but not in the way that there's not like cute scenes throughout because there's plenty of cute scenes throughout that really build their relationship. So I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really, really cute. And I might have to read some more Marina Zapata because I loved it. <laughs> and then my second favorite book that I read in January was Night Film by Marcia Pessel. This is a horror book following our main character, Scott, who's a journalist. And when this woman commits suicide in New York, Scott decides he wants to investigate it. This woman is the daughter of this film director who creates terrifying horror films that are so grotesque. He was dropped from his film label and the movies can only be viewed underground through the black market, that kind of thing. So there's this really weird like cult presence around this filmmaker and Scott thinks that this woman's childhood and what she saw and experienced um, through her father might have had something to do with her death and he really wants to find out what happened. So he recruits two other helpers that um, had some kind of experience with this woman who died and they go about solving the mystery. This book was crazy. I really loved it. It really read like a true crime nonfiction kind of story which was really cool. I love like following an investigative journalist was such a cool lens to view the crime through and the investigation through. The narrative voice was really strong. I also loved the book itself, the way it was multimedia. It was just really well written and well put together and well thought out. It was, had so much depth to it and so much detail to it that made it feel like so real. I think that's what gave it that nonfiction feel is that there was just so much detail and thought put into this book. It was really incredible. I loved it so much. It freaked me out for sure. It did get a little slow in parts and I thought it maybe could have been a little bit shorter but overall an excellent book. I loved this so much and gave it four and a half stars. And then my favorite book of the month was one I haven't talked about on my channel yet and that was In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This book was stunning. There's no better word to describe it. It was stunning. This is a non-fiction memoir-esque tale of Carmen's life in an abusive relationship. Carmen is a queer woman and she was in a lesbian relationship and really wanted to highlight the fact that domestic abuse occurs in any relationship including in queer relationships. And that it's important that we discuss this and bring this to light um, because this is a very real issue that people face every day and there's not a lot of research, there's not a lot of talk about this particular brand of domestic abuse and violence. Carmen's story was really powerful. It is definitely traumatic so I've reached some trigger warnings before going into this. It definitely doesn't shy away from discussing the verbal, mental, and physical abuse that Carmen received but it also is ultimately a hopeful story which was really cool to see and I really appreciate. But above anything this book was so incredibly well written. Like the prose that Carmen uses is so beautiful and turns this like horrid situation into this beautiful work of art and I just really admire her strength in sharing this story and in her artistry and turning this into something beautiful. This book was really powerful. It made me cry really hard and I really would encourage everybody to read it. It's not a scary nonfiction book. It's really short and easy to get through. Carmen actually narrates her the audiobook herself and so that's a very interesting experience. That's how I consumed this book um, and I don't think it detracted from the beautiful writing at all because I absolutely loved this book and it's by far my favorite of the month. So those are all the books that I read in January. Let me know down below what the best book you read in January was. I would love to know. Also check out the description for any relevant links. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to hang out with me more often. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more of me. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye!